Hello everybody, happy Thursday, welcome back to God Reviews with Saturn Spotter. Um, I hope you have, I hope you're having a good week or a good weekend whenever you listen to this. Just, uh, yeah, I don't have much to say other than I had a busy day at work today and I'm recording this late at night so I might stumble a lot more or lose my train of thought a lot easier because I'm very tired but we truck along anyway. We got to keep going. The grind don't stop. Got to keep putting out content for the viewers and listeners who support me. So the day is finally here. We're doing an episode on the Saturn Corporation as a whole. We've done a few episodes on just the S series and, you know, a few concept cars. But we're finally going to talk about the entirety of of the Saturn Corporation and the history and all of that. Now a lot of the stuff, uh, not a lot, a good amount of the stuff in here is going to be stuff that has been covered in the previous episodes on Saturn, but there's also going to be a lot of new information. I just want to kind of put it all together as one. So hopefully we can make that work. But hey, there's nothing wrong with hearing it twice, you know, it just will, uh, just get more implemented into your head. So, what we are going to do here, you may have noticed, it might say that there's a video set up for Spotify. So, I'm pretty sure the video will be working this time. And you'll actually be able to actively see me throwing up pictures and stuff. Let's go ahead and test it. I'm just going to go ahead and click this. So if you have anything on your screen right now that is not the cover picture, and you can read what that says, then that means it's working. So that's good. You'll actually be able to actively see me editing this. You can actually even see my mouse showing up right now. Um, but I think that'll make add a little bit more fun to this and a little bit more of a visual cue that you normally wouldn't have been able to get. So we're gonna go back to this and let's go ahead and get started. So it might be a little bit slower paced because of the fact that you'll actually see me dragging pictures in and you know, kind of explaining the pictures for the people that are driving maybe or are working and can't look over and see but if you are able to look you can also be able to see my mouse cursor so I can point at what I'm talking about so I think that'll be pretty cool but anyway let's go ahead and get right into it I say as we're three minutes in but you know what three minutes out of an hour we got a long way ahead of us it's 10 o'clock at night for me but it's worth it it's worth it it's gonna take a bit of time to get this put together I'm going to wake up early for work tomorrow, but you know what? It's something I enjoy doing, so it's worth doing it. Okay, so as you all know, the Saturn Corporation was an American automobile manufacturer, a registered trademark established on January 7th, 1985, as a subsidiary of General Motors. The company was an attempt at GM to compete directly with Japanese imports and transplants, Initially, in the U.S. compact car market, the company was known for its no-haggle sales technique, which is something I heard a lot about. Unfortunately, never got to experience it myself. As much as I wish I could have, I was unable to do that, because by the time I was old enough to even realize that I was alive, you know, when you just realize, like, oh man, I'm a living being, uh, Saturn was gone. So... Unfortunately, Saturn marketed itself as a different kind of car company and operated independently from its parent company, comprehensively introducing a new car, dealer network, pricing structure, workforce, and independently managed manufacturing plant in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Speaking of, uh, for all my Saturn car fans out there, at some point there's probably going to be a big car meet in Spring Hill, Tennessee that is a Saturn-only car meet. I don't know much about it. There's no plans for it yet, but it's an idea that's kind of been thrown around in the air for a bit of having a big car meet in Spring Hill, Tennessee with ever, all everyone in their Saturns pulls up 
and I think it'd be really cool. So keep an eye out for that. If it does end up happening or I do have more information, it will be on my Instagram. Probably on a lot of Saturn owners' Instagrams if you happen to follow other Saturn people as well. The first cars themselves launched five years after the company's inception, and they advanced GM's space frame construction, manifesting Saturn's market proposition with their dent-resistant polymer exterior panels. So if you... Um, um, actually, no, never mind. Never mind. We're going to move on. Over time, as Saturn drained resources from GM's excessive brand network, and as GM struggled with the 2008 economic collapse, the parent company curtailed, I don't know why I typed it if I forgot how to pronounce it, Saturn's development budgets, leaving Saturn to badge engineer products from other divisions. Notably, a series of federalized models from Opel, with this Saturn gradually lost its unique selling proposition and the market lost interest. Annual sales achieved their highest level in 1994, with 286,003 vehicles marketed. Dang, I didn't realize that uh, their highest level was in 94. That was only three years after they came out. I figured it would have been a little bit later than that, but that's kind of surprising. Following a failed attempt by Penske Automotive to acquire Saturn from GM in September 2009, Saturn ended production in October 2009 ending outstanding franchises in October 2010 and ceased operations 25 years after it began. Rest in peace. Uh, he'll forever be missed. Saturn, 38 years old, almost 39 years old. And uh, it's been dead for about 13, uh, yeah, 13 years. That's really sad. All right, so let's get into the formation and the history behind the Saturn company. Alex C. Mayer began discussions of a revolutionary new small car project codenamed Saturn in June 1982, soon after the GMJ platform was introduced internationally. In November 1983, the Saturn idea was publicized by General Motors Chairman Roger B. Smith and GM's President F. James McDonald. Twelve months later, the first Saturn demonstration vehicle was revealed. On January 7, 1985, the Saturn Corporation was officially founded. Citing full disclosure, Saturn was founded as a private, employee-owned company by former GM leadership. They remained private until GM bought them out and effectively rewrote, rewrote company history. In the mid-1980s, GM released the Saturn concept car. The car, which resembled the first Saturn SL, was not originally meant to start up a brand. However, GM planned to release the Saturn car under one of its brands, which at the time were Chevy, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, and GMC. In 1985, GM changed their plan and founded Saturn as its own brand, with its first cars being the Saturn SC and the Saturn SL. Production of both Saturn vehicles started in 1990, as early as 1991 model year vehicles. The Saturn SW was later added for 1993. GM had plans for a sedan, a coupe, a convertible, a wagon, and even a sport utility vehicle. However, Saturn's first sport utility vehicle, the View, did not appear until 2002, and Saturn's first convertible, the Sky, did not appear until 2006. Yeah, it's, uh, things definitely did not go planned for this company. Convertible. I've seen the pictures of the SC convertible concept. I actually posted about it on my Instagram as well. But unfortunately that didn't happen. I think it would have would have been really cool. I want to show you the first Saturn like concept release reveal picture. Here it is. Let me go ahead and get this and we're going to put it over here. Get rid of this because you already saw it. Oh, well, I'm messing it up. But you know, we got to start somewhere. Okay, so this was the first picture or the first car Saturn had actually produced. Uh, it looked like this. This is what the Saturn SL was in concept, pretty much. Honestly, I kind of like it. I think it, it looks kind of cool. I kind of dig the way it looks. Here we got another picture of it. Let's put this down in here. Okay, fine, Google. I didn't like you anyway. I kind of like the way it looks. 
this was their like concept of what Saturn was going to be and it it's unique to say the least but I, I, I enjoy the design it's kind of fun to look at although I will say the rear end kind of looks like it goes into almost a pickup truck like it looks like it turns into a, a little ute bed back there it doesn't but oh there's a picture of the rear let me pull that up for you so you can see what the back of the car looked like it's basically for people that can't look it's very boxy it's pretty much there you go why well, just cover up the whole screen why don't you it's pretty much just a rectangle on wheels like think of grand theft auto 4 one of the random cars that isn't a real car because it can't be just that box this pretty much is it but i kind of like it it kind of has like a lincoln look in the back or a buick or a lincoln kind of design feel to it in the rear but i really like it i think it's a cool looking car and i would not have been upset if those ended up in production as the sl although i do really like the sl that we have now i really really want one i've been on an sl kind of addiction i want a manual first gen sl really badly but hey you know what you can't have everything you want <sighs> trust me i know because i don't have every saturn yet anyway so from now we have the official release of the cars up until 2000 on july 30th 1930 the first saturn was built a red 1991 model year saturn sl2 i have a picture of this posted on my instagram as well the first saturn dealership opened in memphis tennessee saturn corporation was launched as a different kind of car company and saturn even had its own unique car models Although later models did share platforms with other GM vehicles to be more cost effective, such as, you know, rebadging Chevy and Opal in their own dealership network that was separate from the rest of GM. Results at Saturn were more doubtful than positive. According to the Wall Street Journal, the project was too ambitious as everything at Saturn is new. The car, the plant, the workforce, the dealer network, and the manufacturing process. Not even a Toyota a highly successful and experienced automaker tackles more than two new items on any single project. While Saturn cars provided popular with buyers, actual sales never met the optimistic projected, projected targets, in part because in the early 1900s, early 1990s recession, I'm, t I'm tired, I'm sorry, it also provided cannibalistic as 41% of Saturn buyers already owned a GM car. And its separation from the rest of GM parent, plus the fact that it drained $5 billion from other car projects, stirred discontent within GM's other divisions. Also, Saturn opened at considerably higher costs than the Japanese transplants, which was factories that Japanese automakers established in the U.S. That's just because, you know, greatness isn't going to be cheap. You know, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, the brand was immediately known for its no-haggle prices. The first Saturn model, the S-Series, was significantly successful a year later saturn entered the canadian market in 1993 saturn's 500,000th car named carla was built in may of 1995 saturn's one millionth car entered into the market in 1996 saturn dealerships distributed the electric gm ev1 the first electric car released under the gm brand in 1997 saturn became the first general motors north american vehicle to be fully built with right hand drive on the same assembly line as the left hand drive vehicles which is really cool uh, the previous right-hand drive GM North American vehicles were built in countries with a left-hand road rule using a knockdown kit, customized dashboard, and steering components as it entered the Japanese market. In January 1999, Saturn rolled out its 2 millionth car. Also in 1999, Saturn began production of its L-Series. So first, I want to talk to you about the EV1. This car is honestly kind of like a mystery not necessarily a mystery but it's something where it's like it could have been really cool and it ended up unfortunately not being able to be as cool as it was supposed to be this is the ev1 sorry i almost said em1 this is not a civic um basically this was a fully electric it was not necessarily an actual saturn but it was built like a saturn like it wasn't actually labeled a saturn that badge on the front is actually just the gm logo um 
but it's a really really interesting the dashboard was crazy here i want to show you the interior the interior of this thing is awesome i'll show you some more pictures as well but oh come on come on come on google there we go look at that look at how cool that looks and look at the dashboard along the top right here with all the lights and the speedometer that looks really cool i would love to drive one but unfortunately they did end up crushing like 90 percent of these um it's a shame there are a few that are still out there and have been found one i know of is in a parking garage and has been abandoned in a parking garage and another one has been it's like behind a, a science school, I think. Here's where like the crushed ones went. There's the picture there. That's what happened to all of them, unfortunately. I spent all that money and all that technology making these and they ended up here, just destroyed. They were really, really cool. I'm trying to decide if I wanna go. I wanna talk a little bit about it. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. It was fuel cell. It wasn't our. Uh, uh, here, let me just do this. This variant extended the EV1 fuel cell. This variant extended all electric propulsion capabilities with a methanol powered fuel cell system, again installed in the trunk. The system consisted of a fuel processor, an expander, and a fuel cell stack. The highway range is about 300 miles with a fuel economy of 80 miles per gallon. The car accelerates 0 to 60 in 9 seconds. 9 seconds isn't great, but it's not terrible. I mean, let's be honest. Um, it's really sad. I really am sad with what happened to the EV1. I would absolutely love to see these on the road and stuff like that, but they were all just destroyed. Four, with about 40 of them were delivered to museums and educational institutes with their electric powertrains deactivated. So you can't even drive them under the agreement that the cars were not to be reactivated and driven on the road. The only intact EV1 was donated to the Sim Smithsonian Institution. It's so sad. Because they're really cool. And it was... I might do... I think what I'm going to do is a little bonus episode on this. I'll, re, uh, I'll end up releasing a shorter bonus episode on a different day of the week. Probably like half an hour-ish, maybe on the EV1 because I think it deserves it. It's a really cool story. But it was honestly like a really it was just a really cool thing that they did. And I've always wanted to see one in person. There are people that have and I'm very envious of them. And I'd love to have one that works, but that's quite literally impossible. So but hey. So now we get into model expansion and uh how they changed from the S series and on from there. I want to put up a picture of the L series, the 2000 to 2002 L series. You'll be able to see that this is quite literally just a facelifted SL. There you go. They aren't ugly. I definitely don't um, hate them. But they just are not the same as an S-Series. It's a much more modernized version of the S-Series. They're still cool. I still like when I get to see them on the road and stuff like that. But they just really are not the same, unfortunately. Um, the wagons are cool. I do like the wagons. The wagons are pretty sweet. Uh, let me pull up a picture for you of a Saturn L-Series wagon. Sorry if you can hear my keyboard typing. I'm working, trying to get a microphone and a nicer setup. That way you can't hear all the outside and background noises. Here we go. Oh, this one actually, uh, I don't want to use that one. There is, I don't remember if I put it in here, but there are a set of wheels that were exclusive to only one model year of the L-Series. This is going to be so blurry. But those wheels right here, they only produce those for one model year. 
So if you have an L-Series or your parents have an L-Series or your grandma has an L-Series, if it has these wheels on it, she's got some really nice ones, some really rare wheels. And honestly, they just look cool. Like they're really, they're cool looking wheels. Let me get a less blurry photo of just the wagon for you so you can understand. Let's do this. Bam. And there you go. Less blurry. I mean, it's not great, but that's, at least you can see it. You wouldn't be able to see it. You have no idea what it looks like if you're new. All right. Let's go back. Um, cool. I messed it up. I messed it up. There we go. There we go. Hold on. Give me one second. I got to fix this. One second. Okay. We're back. I accidentally uh, closed the wrong tab with what I was reading. We're good now. Okay. Saturn's first compact crossover SUV was introduced in 2001 for the 2002 model year as the View, based on the globally used gym design. In 2002, for the 2003 model year, Saturn introduced the Ion as replacement for the S series. In 2004, for the 2005 model year, Saturn began selling the Relay, a minivan, and the first Saturn based on similar models from other GM brands. That same year, the L series was discontinued, RIP. The Sky Roadster was introduced in 2006 as a 2007 model. In 2006, for the 07 model year, the Aura sedan made its way to dealerships along with the Outlook, which was a little bit bigger than the View. In 2006 was the last year that the Ion was produced. The Ion was replaced with the Astra in 2008. And during the 2008 North American International Auto Show, Saturn revealed its Flex Stream concept, concept vehicle, which I can actually show you a picture of this time, and last time I was unable to, and I tried my best to describe it, but it really did not work. This time, there you go. There's the Flex Stream concept car. It was Opal, but it was the same thing. I mean, it literally was the exact, they used the exact same thing to show it. This is the, the Flex Stream concept, which I want to show you pretty much just looks like the Astra, but more futuristic. I'm going to pull up a picture of an Opal because they're exactly the same, like I said. But you can see it's just like a futuristic version of this. I'm trying to get it in a good spot. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you can see the similarities. I think the Flex Stream concept definitely looks cooler. But uh, this is what we got. And hey, that's still cool. Still cool. You know, I mean, I get they couldn't mass produce this. be too expensive and stuff. And look at how big those rims are. At the time that they were making this car, those were huge. Those were like unreal, unreal size rims. But uh, yeah, that's cool. I can actually show you that. Uh, Saturn was believed to have a disagreement with GM and was not very accepting of the company closing. In 2004, GM and the United Auto Workers dissolved their unique labor contract for the Spring Hill manufacturing plant, allowing Saturn operations to be integrated with the rest of GM. And that's where it really died, you know. All right, so we talked about the Saturn view. I want to show you that. We're going to go ahead and get a pre-facelift first-gen Saturn view for you. Actually, let's, let's go ahead and get the red line, because the red line is cooler. So I might as well use the cooler one. Here you go. First gen Saturn View red line. I want one of these so bad. They look so cool. I want one so bad. Uh, so this was their first SUV, and they're pretty cool. They actually offered, you could option to get one in manual. You couldn't get the red line in manual because that is actually a Honda J series engine in the red lines. But if you got the four cylinder, you could get a manual one, which was a five speed manual, which is really cool. Having a manual SUV. I know it's happened and it's not the only car, but it's definitely really cool. Um, so then there was a facelift, which can't say was my favorite. Uh, I like the view, 
This isn't the red line, by the way. This is just the base model facelifted version. Not my favorite. I don't think it screams Saturn as much, which I know they really didn't anyway after they started rebadging stuff and all that, but still pretty cool. It's still cool to see them on the road. They did make a red line version of the facelifted model, and it also looks good, but I prefer the first gen. That's just me. Uh, let's see. We also mentioned... I want to show... There was also a view green line is basically it was just a hybrid so the red line is a performance version you get a body kit you get that honda j series engine you get uh, i believe you get bigger rims a little bit meatier tires and you get like the highest quality possible interior and stuff like that the green line was just a hybrid version so it was here this is actually a cool picture it's literally just a hybrid you didn't get like a J series engine or anything. It was just the hybrid, but it was cool. I like that they called it a green line to kind of go along with their red line kind of thing. Also, I just realized that has a US government plate on it. Huh. That's kind of cool. The US government was using a Saturn green line. Wow, look at that. Um But that's pretty cool. This one they actually used to you know, plug-in hybrid prototype. They did end up making it not a prototype. They did produce them. I actually found one at a junkyard one time. They have a cool gauge cluster, and there's some special badges you can get, stuff like that. I really think it's they're fun to look at. Um, so then we got the second generation of the Saturn View, which was just a Chevy Captiva. And that's it. Go ahead and put it here. It's just a rebash Chevy Captiva, as you can see. If you're looking, if you're unable to look, just imagine what a Chevy Captiva looks like with Saturn badges on it. It's the same thing. They're the exact same car. Um, which was disappointing, but it was literally the later, later years of GM and Saturn, or not GM. It's the later years of Saturn, so they stopped putting in effort because they knew they were about to go bankrupt and have to disconnect the company. So we also mentioned the Saturn Ion, which the Ions are pretty cool. I really like the Ions. I own one. This is an Ion 2. So the way the levels of these worked is you had the base level, then you had level 1, or yeah, you had level 1, level 2, level 3, and then red line, I believe. Or then you had, you had the quad coupe as well. So this is just the sedan. Right here, basic iron sedan. I'm sure you've probably seen them. Yeah, yeah, there's there's level 1, level 2, level 3, and red line. Actually, I want to tell you kind of the difference between them. So, the level 1 trim was only offered as a four-door sedan, which you can see here. It was the entry-level ion trim and included features such as cloth seating surfaces, 14-inch tires, and steel wheels with plastic wheel covers. Manual windows, manual door locks, AM, FM stereo with four-speaker audio system. A heater, and you didn't get standard air conditioning, which is crazy. A 2.2 liter dual overhead cam, inline four, and a five speed manual transmission. Uh, the level one was, did end up being discontinued. You couldn't get a level one in the later years of the Ion, which is kind of crazy. Then there's level two, which was the entry level quad coupe trim, upgraded the trim for the four door sedan, and included features such as 15 inch tires and steel wheels with plastic wheel covers. Air conditioning, AM FM stereo with a single disc CD player, which also was an auxiliary audio input jack in later years. Then level three was the top of the line trim for the quad coupe and the four door sedan. It added more convenience items such as power windows, power locks, keyless entry, which is nice, 16 inch tires, and aluminum alloy wheels, upgraded cloth seating surfaces, AM FM stereo with a cassette and a single CD disc player. Uh, later, it was an AM FM stereo with a satellite option, a single disc CD MP3 player, and an auxiliary auto audio input jack. Then you get the Red Line, which is my personal favorite. The Red Line was a performance oriented trim, only available as a quad coupe. It featured a 2 liter supercharged gasoline engine, of course, a unique body kit and front grill, which actually is kind of funny because there's not really a grill. I'll explain that in a second. Unique Aluminum alloy wheels, unique cloth seating surfaces, and a rear spoiler. 
So you heard quad coupe in there and you might not know what that is. I'm about to show you. So the quad coupe was basically a coupe but with four doors, but the rear two doors were clamshell doors. So you open this passenger door and about right here on this back door on the inside is a handle and it opens outwards. Uh, I believe I have a picture. Yep, I can show you the clamshell doors right here. I'll throw this out right there. You see it opens outwards like that. There's the door handle. I actually, every single time I drive my red line, I use this door. It's They're really helpful because you can so easily just throw stuff in there and then just close it and get in. It's really nice. I didn't think I'd end up using it that much, but it's genuinely really cool. Also... I want these door panels. I don't think my door panels have that blue. Uh, maybe? I don't know. I don't think they do. I don't think my door panels have that blue trim. My red line is blue in case you haven't seen it yet. So these would be really cool. Anyway, so the red line, you want to see that unique body kit. I got you. Here is the silver version of the red line. I actually really do like the factory silver color. But there it is. So as you can see, you still get the quad coupe, but you get these nice rims and you get this body kit on it. This picture does not have the spoiler, but you see you get some different headlights as well. The headlights have changed a bit. What's funny, it says it says front grill. There's actually no grill right here. It's just an open square. If you put anything there, you overheat. Everybody on all the Saturn... Um, forums and everything has always talked about how if you put any sort of gate there or frame or like what's the word i'm thinking of i don't know if you put anything there like to design it or anything it overheats the car will overheat it's crazy it's weird interesting design but i mean hey you know it is what it is i'm not gonna complain uh because it's a really fun car to drive. I want to get a picture of the spoiler that I have. Also, I have a 2004 Saturn Ion Redline and for the 04, this was the only year that this color blue was offered. I'm going to show you. They had the 04 is like the unloved child of the Saturn Ion Redlines. Everything about the 04 is different compared to the 05 to the 07 well 05 to 06 and then 07 is also the unloved child because it i'll get to that in a minute but it's it's this really nice color um it's a bit brighter blue the rest of them get a bit darker uh, i want to see if i can find honestly this is a better picture because this picture right here also shows the spoiler that i have which honestly is one of the best parts of the car so there you go. Um, so yeah, you get the 04s are the only color they made of this blue. All the other ones were a bit darker blue. And you get the spoiler that comes in all of them. Now for uh, the red lines as well, it said you got the upgraded seats. I want to show you exactly what those are. So, you know, normal cars, you just get standard leather or cloth seats. Oh, actually, I want to show you the supercharger. So, as you heard, from factory, supercharged, 2 liter I-4, there it is. It sounds great. Oh, that's the cover. Oh, I just, I just realized that. I don't have this cover here. Somebody was asking me if I had it, and I didn't realize there was supposed to be a cover here. Huh. There's one for sale on eBay. I might pick it up. But, uh... Let me show you, from factory, you get some really, really nice, very comfortable Recaro seats. And what's nice about mine is that since my car is blue, you actually get blue Recaro seats. So mine already match the car. Now you could get like a red ion red line, and the seats would still be blue. So they don't, you would have to color match them yourself. But you get Recaro seats from factory, and they are mad comfortable. They are super comfortable. You, you are very snug in that seat. You take a turn at 50 miles an hour, you're not going to, like, roll out the seat. You are snug. They are very, very comfortable. I am very big fans of those. And uh, the only thing is that if you have a 2007 
Ion Red Line. You did not get these. You did not get Recaros. They cheaped out. And you just get basic leather. I'm pretty sure. They might still be Recaro. I don't believe they are. No, no, here they are. They're not Recaros. They're uh, shaped similarly. Here's a picture up on the screen. But they're, they're the same kind of shape, but they're not Recaro branded. They're just leather Saturn leather G, leather, blah, 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 leather GM seats. So a lot of people will try to swap in Recaros out of previous years. I don't know why. They just cheaped out on the 07. It's really weird. I really don't understand why they did it. But they did. So sticking on the concept or the topic, I should say, of the red line. There was also a competition package. Now this only came from 05 to 07. 04 did not get a competition package, which means I did not get a competition package option for my car. But the competition package consisted of, if you remember from earlier, let me get a picture for you just in case. That is not it at all. I'm not going to throw that up there. Uh, here we go. So these are the stock wheels you get on the red line right there. This is a really beautiful picture, by the way. I think this, yeah, this is the darker blue. This is the 05 to 07 blue. Um, or 06. But these are the wheels that I have. These are the wheels you get with the non-competition package. If you have the competition package, there are a few little bonuses you get. One of them is you get these special versions of the wheels right here. As you can see, they're gray in the middle with a silver outline. Personally, I don't like them as much. I really like the solid chrome or silver. They look cool, but I like the solid color ones more, and I would keep the solid color ones. Um, so I'm glad mine came with those. You also, this picture doesn't have it. This picture does. You also got a set of fog lights. Now, there they are right there. As you can see, in this front bezel right here, instead of those fake little plastic grills, you actually get fog lights that go into there. I had the little fake plastic grills because the 04 does not come with a competition edition, or package, I mean. Um, but I just recently got this bezel right here, and they are not easy to find and they are not cheap so I was very thankful that I had the opportunity to actually find one I had been searching for one for a while but I'm super excited to put it on my car because it's this is what it looks like without it it's not a huge difference and a lot of people won't notice oh come on why is it why, oh no oh, oh, oh. hey guys you know it's the first time first time I've had video so things are going to happen things are gonna break you know things are gonna go crazy I'm just trying to post, paste the picture. Let me recopy it here because I want you to see the difference. It's just not going to work. You know what? That's fine. So, okay. So just imagine this as a fake grate here. Maybe if I delete this picture, I can show it to you because I want you to see the comparison so you can tell the difference. That's not right. That painted over those that won't look the same. You know what? This is here. We will use that dude in blue. We're going to use his thumbnail. If you haven't watched that dude in blue, he did a video on this Saturn Ion Red Line right here. He talked very positively about it, and that is awesome. Um, he also talked about the Cobalt SS in the video, which is the Chevy version of the same thing, pretty much. All you can use, you can use ZZP parts on all of them. Um, but you see this gray here, this is what you get. This is what I have currently, because I haven't put the fog lights in yet. And they look cool. Like, it looks okay, but the fog lights just look so much more aggressive they just look better they add a little bit more taste to the car i just really like the fog lights so i was very happy that i was able to find some see look at that look at that difference i mean obviously i would use some restorer on this to make it a little bit darker not as faded but it looks a lot it looks a lot more aggressive a lot sportier i personally really like it um as that with the fog lights you also got a ladder tack and boost gauge that you could only get with a competition package here's a good picture of it right here 
Um, I also bought one of these because I have the 04. I did not have the option to get one of these for the 04. That is very low quality. I shrink it a little better. So this right here attaches to, I have a picture of it right here. You can, you can just connect it right up. Oh, come on. Why does nothing want to work, man? You're not making this easy. Not making this easy. It just, it's just not going to do it. It's not going to do it. Uh, can I do this? There we go. Okay. So you see it just goes right in on that behind the steering wheel. And there's the fog light button, by the way. I had to have a friend of mine pick up a bucket from a Saturn that had fog lights. It wasn't a red line, so the interior was tan. So I'm going to have to find a way to paint it or dye it or something. So that way I don't have this tan bucket in my black interior. But you got this right here, which is just a boost gauge and a ladder tack with the lights, which are pretty cool. I'm going to get mine wired up soon. Uh, I bought it a while ago. These are also very hard to find and very expensive. Another thing you got that I can't really show was you got a limited slip differential, which are also, whoops, did it again. I did it again, guys. I'm breaking everything. Very expensive, and these are probably the hardest to find of all of them. I actually don't know. The fog lights took me a long time to get, but very difficult to find. And if you want to swap it in, it's going to cost you a few thousand dollars. But at that point, you'd probably have a better chance of just buying a competition edition. But I didn't want to because I liked my car. I liked the 04 exclusive color. And uh, I'm basically building it into a competition package without the limited slip differential and stuff like that. So, now that we've talked about the ION for a bit, we also, we mentioned the Saturn Relay. Now, this there isn't a lot to talk about with this because it's just a... What's the car name? What's the car called? I can always think of it, and now I can't. A Pontiac Montana... Chevy Uplander. It's just a rebadge version of those. I'll drag it onto the screen now. Let's get rid of the red line stuff. Here it is. These are very uncommon, and there is a unicorn one of these where you can get it in all-wheel drive. V6 all-wheel drive. That's like the unicorn of the Saturn Relays. Not, not very interesting. I mean, they're cool. A lot of space. They're very, very hard to find. They're very rare. The front bumper almost looks like an R34, especially the headlights. Actually, I want to pull that up. I want to show you, because I've seen people, like pictures of people actually putting them together. They're not like spot on, but if you squint a little bit, they look pretty similar. Let me go ahead and uh, pull this up next to it. Minimize it a bit. I mean, the front grille there, the headlights are pretty similar. You got these bumper lights right here, the little grille beneath it. Obviously, it's a little bit of a stretch, but you can see where, it, where the comparison comes from. I thought it was pretty funny. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the Saturn Relay. There wasn't much about it. Uh, 3.5 liter V6, generates 200 horsepower, 220 foot-pounds of torque, 0 to 60 in the 9 second range. Uh, for 2006, it was a 3.9 liter V6 with 240 horsepower. Uh, pretty cool. It started at $22,000, which for a minivan at that time, well... At that time, that's probably pretty averagely priced. If that was a new price new today, then that'd be really good. We also got the Saturn Sky. I feel like everybody knows about the Saturn Sky. I think people who aren't even fans of Saturn, but fans of cars, definitely know about the Saturn Sky. There's that 2JZ built drift one that everybody knows. I guess I say everybody, but... There's a Saturn Sky. There's a picture. If you don't recognize the name, you'll probably recognize it by looking at it. I want to find a picture. Here it is. This thing, this is one of the coolest Saturn Skies ever. It's a 2JZ swapped Saturn Sky that they actually run in Formula Drift. It's crazy. This thing is absolutely insane. The videos of it are insane. This dude sends it in this car. I mean, he, he flies. It's awesome. I definitely recommend looking up videos of it if you haven't seen it already. There's also the Sears Saturn Sky Drift vehicle that I would like to show you. Here it is. There's another built 
Saturn Sky. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's an LS. They swapped an LS into this, I believe. But you can these things are cool. These look sweet. Like they look really good, especially when you build them like this. But they just I really like the Saturn Sky. There's one for sale near me that's a really good price, but I have nowhere to put it, so I cannot get it. Also, forgot to mention this, the Saturn Sky Red Line was featured in Forza Motorsport 4. It won't let me put a picture of it for some reason. But if you play Forza Motorsport 4, you can play as the Saturn Sky, as well as the Ion Red Line. That is also in Forza Motorsport 4, which I didn't know until I had played the game like years later. So that's really cool. But yeah, the Saturn Sky is cool. There is a red line package. You get the turbo, and you get it, uh, you can get it in manual. It's really sweet. I really, really like the Saturn Skies. They are probably the most popular Saturn of all time, if we are being honest. So next, we also talked about the Saturn Outlook. Once again, nothing really that special. It's just a GMC Acadia. Just a rebat here. Let me get this really, oops, let me get these really cool cars off the screen so that we can look at this. Still a Saturn, still, you know, like to see one driving down the road, but it's just a GMC rebadged because, you know, that's what they ended up doing at the end of the Saturn's lifespan is just rebadging them. It's really sad, but I still do enjoy seeing them on the road because it's still a Saturn. It's an eight seater three row seating pretty cool the front row consists of bucket seats second row is 60 40 split or two individual captain chairs and the third row is 60 40 split um they're cool to see in person um 235 horsepower dual exhaust pretty sweet nothing super special then there was also the aura which these are fairly common. These are very similar to the Chevrolet Malibu. That's what I'm thinking of. We'll pull that up. Get rid of this. So as you can see, you've probably seen these. These are very common. Pretty much just a Chevy Malibu. They're cool though. They're they're very comfortable. I've sat in one of the junkyard before. They're very comfortable. You got nice space, and they. Have a left some good get up and go to them. It's not bad. Let's get a picture of the rear for you. So yeah, there. They're okay. Could have been cooler if they were still under Saturn, like how Saturn should have been. But unfortunately, that did not end up happening. So now we got. 2008-2009 attempt to sell brand and market changes here is where the end started let's go ahead and clear that go back to this in u.s congressional hearings on december 2nd 2008 general motors announced its intentions intentions to focus on their four core brands chevy buick cadillac and gmc with the sale consolidation or closure of Saturn and the remaining brands Pontiac, Hummer, and Saab with Oldsmobile having already discontinued 2004. RIP Pontiac, Saab, Oldsmobile, great brands. Hummer, you're cool too, but yeah, it's a little different. General Motors chairman and former CEO Rick Wagoneer announced news announced during a news conference on February 17th, 2009 that Saturn would remain in operation through the end of the planned life cycle for all Saturn products. In February 2009, GM declared its intent to part with this brand by closing or selling the division, either to investors or to dealers, as part of reconstructing, reconstructing plans dependent upon the receipt of a second round of government loans. It was the third such action for GM in the 21st century, following those of Oldsmobile, which ceased production in 2004, and Pontiac, which ended production for the 2010 model year by the end of 2009. General Motors announced in, in June 2009 that it was selling the Saturn brand to Penske Automotive Group. The arrangement was similar to the deal under which Penske distributes Daimler's Di AG Smart Car. Everyone knows a smart car. In the United States, Penske was not planning to buy the factory, so it would eventually have had to contract other car companies to build other cars. Um sold as Saturns. GM would have built the Aura View and Outlook for Penske for the first two years to replace GM as the brand's manufacturer. Penske was in discussion with several global automakers 
including Renault Samsung Motors of Korea and the Renault Nissan Alliance. By the end of 2009, GM closed all of its 46 Saturn dealerships in Canada, even though Saturn dealerships also selling Saab vehicles. GM and Penske decided that they could no longer make a business case to distribute Saturn vehicles in Canada after the sale of the brand. Saturn's customer service, parts, and warranty operations moved to other GM dealerships in Canada. R.I.P. It's really sad. You know, like, if Penske just went through the purchase, technically we'd still have Saturn, but it wouldn't be the late and great Saturn that we know from originally. It still would have just been a rebadged GM products for a while, which is a shame. I wish Penske could have bought it and then brought back the whole plastic. I mean, they were still plastic, but, like, the S-Series and the original designs and the... It's so sad, man. But hey, maybe that's what makes them so special to me is because they don't exist. So now, go into failed sale and company end sections to end off this episode. On September 30th, 2009, Penske ended its deal with General Motors because of Penske not finding another manufacturer to manufacture the Saturn cars. At one point, Penske was in talks with car manufacturers including Renault, Samsung Motors, and the Renault and Nissan Alliance, as we said. However, talks with the Renault and Nissan Alliance had ended mainly because of the objections from the Nissan part of the alliance. Other part of the deal between Penske and GM was for GM to continue making the Aura, the Outlook, and the View until 2011, and then another manufacturer would take over. So I guess even if they did, they still wouldn't even been Saturns for long. It would have just turned into a different car. Since Penske did not find another car manufacturer willing to continue production of Saturn vehicles, the deal between Penske and GM ended. As a result, General Motors announced that Saturn Corporation would be seizing all operations in 2010 and that all Saturn dealerships would be closed by October 31st, 2010 or until all their inventory <laughs> had been sold. In February 2010, to aid customer retention, GM announced that it was offering existing Saturn owners up to $2,000 in incentives to purchase a new Chevy Buick Cadillac or GMC until March 31st. I mean, that's kind of messed up. You know, let people keep their better car that you're shutting down. You know, I think they want to keep it. Customers were required to have owned their Saturns for at least six months and were not required to trade them in to be eligible. Oh, so you could just have one? Well, okay, I guess... I guess... That's not a bad move on GM. Saturn authorized service providers were introduced since the closing of the Saturn brand. Available at GM dealers, Saturn authorized service providers are responsible for all aspects of service, including warranty service on Saturn vehicles. Saturn's last vehicle models were the Aura, the Outlook, the Sky, and the View. You know what I just realized I never showed a picture of? The Astra. I never put a picture of the Saturn Astra on the screen. So let me do that for you. Wait a minute, yeah, I did. I just did it as the Opal. Well, I'm going to show you the Saturn version instead of the Opal version because the Saturn badge is on it. So, that's a good enough reason to me. Okay, let's go ahead. Switch to the black screen and pull this over it. So, okay, it doesn't want to do it. We'll do it with this picture instead. So, there it is. Same thing you saw before, but with the Saturn logo, which makes it cooler. Um... I don't think there are any that I missed. I do, real quick, want to go ahead, show you a picture of the first gen Saturn SL. Um, oh man, that's, I don't know why. That, here's one with a body kit. Fitment, not great. But, uh, has a body kit. It's very period correct build. But uh, there's a first gen, in case you have never seen a first gen. I mean, that was it with a body kit, but uh, still pretty cool. I actually, here is a third gen Saturn SL. I actually follow this guy on Instagram. Me and him are buddies. Okay, it won't let me pull the picture up. Never mind then. Ignore that. You know, technology does not like me sometimes, and it's fine. You know, I'm here. I'm here to live with it. Uh, you know, fine. If you're going to be like that, I won't do it then. I'm not going to show you. We're just going to keep reading. Uh, where was I? Saturn Astro, Saturn of the Sky, Saturn View. GM had to c 
continued to produce the aura, the outlook, the sky, the view in the 2010 model year. In 2012, General Motors rebadged and reintroduced the discontinued Saturn view as the 2012 Chevy Captiva Sport. The Captiva Sport was mostly unchanged from discontinued Saturn view. The Captiva Sport did not have a hybrid version available like the view did. That's because it's not as cool. That's the reason why. And then here it is. GM ended Saturn production on October 7, 2009 and ended its outstanding franchises on October 31st of 2010. Uh, as sad as that is, you know, it really is, it had to happen, you know, it had to happen eventually. Not everything nice can stay. Sometimes things do have to come to an end. And as we know, Saturn did come to an end. It should have stayed. It would have been great. But, I mean, I also kind of feel like if it did, it wouldn't have as good of a, uh, as good of a memory behind it as it does. You know, I mean, if, if they just kept going with it, it wouldn't be the same. Because it'd all just be rebadged GM products anyway. Here is my first gen Saturn SC from 1992. I bought it like this. It still looks like this. <laughs> um, but I'm very excited to get this car on the road. It's a piece of automotive history. As I believe all first, second, and third gen Saturns are. I think Ions are as well. But it's just not, not as much. They didn't make history as much as the S series did. Um, Saturn definitely left a good spot in history in the car culture, the car community the car world as a whole and unfortunately nowadays I don't think there's any other brand that's ever going to be able to do stuff like that and make a big difference and do something different out of the blue because everything's just oriented towards making money and selling as many cars as possible and on that note, that is going to be the end of this, today's podcast, this podcast. I was going to say this week, but I do upload multiple per week, so I don't think I would want to do one per week. I may end up changing the schedule of the podcast, but we'll see. Just because they're so close together, and then there's like a pause, a longer pause. We'll see. If you guys have any ideas on schedules, there's a Q&A down below. Let me know what you thought of this episode. If you want, what cars you'd want bonus episodes for, small little 30-minute episodes I can release on like a Monday or a Wednesday or a Friday or Saturday, Sunday. I'd, I like to throw out little mini episodes there. I think that'd be fun. Um, and let me know what your best or most memorable experience with a Saturn is, whether it be at a car show whether it be your parents had one you were growing up, whether you saw me at a car show at the chalkboard car and you got to ride on the chalkboard car. You never know. Some people have never even realized what a Saturn was until they saw my car at a show. I've actually experienced that a lot. People come to me and ask what my car even is. And they're like, dang, I didn't know they could look like that. I'm like, me neither, until I did it. But here we are. Um, thank you guys for listening. I'm so happy you guys support my podcast and I'm happy you're here. I appreciate every one of you, whether you're listening on Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, soon to be Apple Podcast. By the way, if you're an Apple user and you prefer to use Apple Music or whatever their service is called, I can't remember. Uh, we'll be on Apple Podcasts hopefully soon or Apple Music. Um, and then there's a few others I'm going to be applying to be on as well. But I'm already excited enough that I'm even on Spotify and Amazon Music. That's really cool. And I'm very, very happy about that. But yeah. Thank you guys so much for your support. As always, next episode will be out either Tuesday or Thursday, depending on when you're listening to this. But new episodes every week, Tuesday, Thursdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I release them early because I know a lot of people have like stuff they have to do in the morning at work or on the way to their job or wherever they're going. And if it's, a, if it's readily available in the morning then they can listen to it when they need to during the day. But, uh, yeah, I hope, 
I hope this video segment was fun. I know it was a bit messy, but eventually it will be cleaned up and kind of planned out a little better. I think it's fun though. It feels more interactive. Like I'm, instead of me just like lecturing, it's more like, hey, look, I'm showing you this. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. If you guys have any recommendations, ideas, episodes, anything like that, Q&A down below. If you're on Amazon Music, I don't think that's a thing. If you're on YouTube, there's a comment section. Um... But, uh, yeah. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate you all. Goodbye.